Sorry, a little close? No. A little loud? Wasn't. I don't know what's going on. No, it was one of those, I recognize that good morning. It's that I'm still asleep. Good morning. You're like, you've pushed it out. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I know that good morning. I think my eyes might be closed, too. Like, they're open. Hmm. But, Light. But, uh, but they're not. I feel you. Good morning, fiancés. Morning, y'all. How's the day so far? Hmm. Are tell, you tell to us. are you running on zero sleep <clears throat> like I am? Are you just rolling over in bed? Ah, uh, I'd love to listen to us from bed. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how much sleep I get. Like you know, turn over, hit news with my fiance, and then get all riled up. Maybe that's why people like the show. Mm. It riles them up in the morning, and then they go off into their day. Ready to, uh, you know, spark revolutions. Man, I hope that's the case. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely not be able to sleep through that. No. no. And It'd something's be... got to happen, y'all, because things are getting crazy. I'm just, I mean, like, what a week. <laughs> is it every week that we say this? Yeah, what a week. it is. What so a what is, week. What is that saying? What a week! How many how many uh, weeks has it been since the orcas have decided they've had enough? We're not going to take it. You know that they're they're going to do their part. Yeah. You know. Okay, you guys. I see. Y- yeah, we've waited we, long we, enough. We've waited long enough. We we've seen. We've given you the opportunity. We've seen. We've heard about your justice. We. Oh. Yeah. We've okay. heard about your justice. We're. We're going to handle things our own way. The vigilantes. The sonar that is just the regular, you know, built-in oh, yeah. sound system of the whales. Yeah. They le- they legit. They were like, it's the billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> and that just resonated on the, on the bottom of the ocean floor. Could you imagine if this was like a hit? Like if the orcas damaged the sub on the way down? I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Oh. There's is there an if? <laughs> the way your eye just squinted like, come on. Come on. Where is the Meg? <laughs> You're aren't we on at least a sequel or yeah. a third? Yeah. The Meg is out. This is the okay? this is definitely fighter for Meg 3. I have I have seen Jason Statham <laughs> run on a, a broken dock or boardwalk, if you yeah. up here, if you will, and escape the Meg. But yeah. you know what he had in that moment? Well, a knife? Oxygen. Uh oh. Oh yeah, that's true. And the ability to run because he wasn't like fused into, bolted in, mm-hmm. a vessel a, piloted a with vessel. a PlayStation controller, knockoff PlayStation controller, with a PlayStation controller that is controlled by someone else, with no communication, no what's it called? Um, when you, it's not a toe, but like when when you're attached to mm-hmm. another, yeah, tethered, tethered. We ain't tethered or nothing. They ain't seen the movie Us once. And this is why we need to celebrate black films on a far more regular basis. Mm. Oh, ambush, really? What happened? On a far more regular basis? You uh, not paying attention to my incredibly I'm funny sorry. joke. I was making I mean, sure it was in focus mode and it's his proof. That's what I was doing. So you were staring at your phone that you're not supposed to be looking at because you're supposed wow. to be focused? No, I was putting it you're not was supposed... in focus so we're getting any, you know, notifications. Uh-huh. You know? All right, give it to me. But you were not notified by... 
the person sitting directly in front of you speaking into a microphone. Wow. You know? You know what? You know what? I want to take this opportunity to apologize. Go you're on. Right. You're right. <laughs> it's 7.38 in the morning. And if jokes are going to land, someone needs to be there to receive them. That's all I'm saying. You know? Thank you. Yeah. I hope someone else uh, chuckled at the tethered joke there. Okay. But uh doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The organizing, um, because <laughs> that's what it is, guys. We're, we're we're watching the orcas organize. This is organizing at its finest. I was really surprised when you made me aware that they are communicating with other whales, and they're hey man, the families are talking. Okay, relatives. This is organized crime. Okay. First of all, it's not crime. <laughs> I'd rather call this a family reunion. It's is it crime? No. If someone's no. invading and terrorizing your no. home? No, they're all they're all in your backyard kidnapping your babies. And then they're ripping out your farms cuz you know, what what am I eating now? You're taking all the fish. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. It's not no. I it's, just... But it's and it's so much more than that. That human activity is not just uh, messing up the air up here yeah. or just messing up the weather patterns. It's all of it. We have been ruining the ocean because there are so many people that are like, I gotta make this disappear. Yeah, I don't want to pay for the yeah. things that make you disappear. It. <clears throat> dump it in the ocean because clearly nothing lives there. The amount of plastics and microplastics that are in the ocean and that have washed up on the beach as fine sand is ridiculous. Like, we've ruined the pla- ruined. I mean, when you see a big like a, a like a whale or mm. a dolphin, like when you see big animals, mammals uh, what's it called? Beaching when, them. Uh, yeah, when they're beached, mm-hmm. and then you see all of these plastics in their mouth, mm-hmm. just like that's all that's all they've gotten to eat that day is humans' junk. Right. Really makes you think. It takes a mountain of acrobatics to be able to see that clear connection, right? animal beaches itself open the mouth filled with human waste it takes a mountain of acrobatics to see that and say well this is just nature <laughs> and we don't have any effect on the ecosystem like come on you know how much water there is out there this thing found this thing swam to where the trash was and they did it's not smart enough to know don't eat trash mm. like I am spent, bro. <laughs> like, spent. Well, and clearly so are they. So, yeah. uh, the solidarity with the orcas that are out here um, actually attacking yachts. Bruh. Getting them... Uh, I mean, all of them had, you know, at least so far, have had actual communication with... Uh, you know, a place that could help them, unlike, right. unlike the Titan that can't talk to nobody, mm-hmm. you know. But I would, you know, want to go back to the idea of one of these um, majestic creatures <coughs> happening upon this pill-like thing <coughs> right? that is made of all of the wrong stuff to be at the depths of the sea that it is. Bruh batting it around you know like um the meg is gonna have something to say about (laughs) deep sea tourism and you know wow coming down and taking a peek at the shipwrecks and the (laughs) wow so the update you gave me dinosaurs you guys right i mean do you understand that the meg is a dinosaur and jason statham knows it (laughs) okay listen what are the things you told me is that 
the orcas have now started communicating with other whales, pulling them into their ranks and saying, hey, let's need you to get on code. And, uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be clear that I use none of these words, but okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got to take more of these ships down. There's only so many orcas out here, guys, and they're responsible. You want you want next, or you want to make sure we get all these ships up, up, out of, up out of here? That's what's happening? And you mean to tell me, I just keep seeing scientists on the news saying, and we're just not sure what could lead them to this behavior. Uh, it's somewhat playful, I suppose. I don't know why they're doing that. I mean, I feel like if you've spent your life and your your life's work is being able to explain the behavior of certain animals. Right. Um, and just from the few uh, documentaries I've seen about sea-dwelling creatures. Right. There's not a whole lot to guess about. <laughs> no. It's They've just, been done yeah. dirty. They are... I mean, these are... Uh, the oldest, like the, mm. <laughs> they're mm -hmm. they've they've been here, fam. Yeah, and you're constantly telling us how smart they are. They're incredibly smart. Their communication is you is outrageously effective. Right. They can talk to each other miles and miles away from each other. That's great, bro. They have individual pods, have their own languages, own cultures. Like, you can understand all of that. And then you can look at a pod of orcas taking no, uh, what's the word? Prisoners? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, this is a real head scratcher. <laughs> right. Ooh, what do you what do you make of this? Man, I wonder what I wonder what they're thinking out there now. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder why they're doing that. Are you out of what? You should be wondering why it took them this long to do that. Literally they are shouting from the ocean, this should radicalize you. You know what's really interesting though? Hey, we'll take care of it. What? I kinda see why these biologists would be confused and why they would I think in some ways they're honestly confused, and then others are just, you know, some dis <laughs> uh, cognitive dissonance happening there. I don't know. Um, they've been waiting for black people to launch arms in revenge for centuries. <laughs> and the orcas? I would want to make sure I'm paying attention. The white establishment. Oh, okay. And it hasn't happened. Because that's not what we want. It's just not oh, mm -hmm. what we want. You know? Those aren't the means we wish to take for liberation. However, nature <laughs> doesn't care about politics. Doesn't care about optics. <laughs> any of that. And I think because it hasn't happened yet, it's as much brilliance as they're attributing to the species, they're still like, Revenge? Uh, what? Let me talk about it. Let me let me talk about it. They bringing up old stuff. Yeah, no, no, what are we talking about? You know. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's to me very telling what you can and can't see in the moment, <laughs> especially for those with the expertise of certain things. Bruh, you're blind, fam. But I get it. Wow. You know, they're hard to understand. Mm. You know what else is hard to understand? Which is it? That Oregonians want to pump their own gas. I find that. Ambush? Don't get me started. Don't you. I will stand up in this thing. Uh, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Are there Oregonians that want to pump their own gas? Yes. Is there an instance in which this is helpful? Rural Oregon, late night driving, you know, right? No one's there, but you need gas and you don't want to have to stop at what looks like a ghost town and like get stuck there. <coughs> Totes get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me pump my own gas in that moment, sure. I don't understand the people that live in the city that are like, you know, what I need to be able to do 
I need to be able to do a thing that I don't ever do. Because I don't ever do it because here you can't do it. I need to be able to do that thing to, to get to work on time. Or that. You know what's going to happen. I, in that same scenario that you're describing where this person is rushing to get to work on time, which is an impossibility because you left to work. You left home late. You're going to get to this gas station. And you're going to rush to make the transaction. And you're going to screw it up. And you're going to screw it up. Because, again, you don't know how to operate these things. You don't. All of a sudden, there's gas on your hands. Yeah. And which car did I use? And why is it still running? I need someone to come help me. And now... How come I can't just pay right here? Why does it say pay inside? Oh, Lordy. Do y'all want that message? I mean, seriously. I really <laughs> wish that people would have thought this through. You ain't seen one meme on the internet? One where I will leave here if I can't just pay for the thing right here. Dog. You want, now I got to come in. Not only, mm. not only do I have to abandon my vehicle. Right. Put the gas thing open. I have to go inside. <laughs> To which there is definitely a line. There's where your line is. That there's the line. Oh, so you gotta go in trying, there. It's just triggering me. Wait for one of the two cashiers, but only one is clearly, you know, ringing people up. The other one is on break, I guess. Yeah, theoretically. Or restocking and ignoring the customers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you gotta wait to pay. Then you gotta. Then you gotta go back out there and get to pumping. Anyway, Bruh, that's good for this state being like, we should definitely do that. And here's my deal. When you when you're inconvenience, when you're like. Mm. Or say you're 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 not from here and you have moved here. And for some reason, it is, you know, a hitch in your craw that you are unable to pump your own gas. Wait, a hitch in your craw? I don't know. I've never heard. OK, I don't, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure it's the same. <laughs> Fiances, can you please set him straight? I don't have time right now, and he's trying to distract me. I'm not. You are. Now I've lost my place. Well, it was hitching the craw. Well, if you're upset that you don't get to pump your own gas, well, I guess uh, happy day for you. Mm. The uh, this will go into effect immediately if uh, when I mean the governor signs this cool, which is just that you know, to be clear, full service gas stations are not going away, it is they will now have the opportunity to make up to half of their pumps self service. But when you're inconvenienced, I just want to get back to this point when you're annoyed, you being annoyed or, uh, you know, you want so badly to be in control of, again, how late you are to work. When all of that aligns with, you know, the fossil fuel industry and the <laughs> speak on it, because I think they missed that part. When 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 that aligns and all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Yeah, let's do the thing they've been asking for for decades. Let's take away a couple jobs. I have a feeling that the people that complain about not being able to pump their own gas also have feelings and opinions about who's working and how and how much those people get paid and to make sure that they are not people in tents on the street. Mm. Those folks will lose jobs. Those jobs will, many of those will go away. Yep. That is the point of yep. the industry trying to get you to be the one who pumps your gas. Man, you guys missed the mark. Because where does the liability go to, you know? It changes a little bit. Let me tell you something right now. As these self-service lines get longer, it's you guys. <laughs> it's you guys I'm going to be upset with. It's you. I'm going to shake my fist at the heavens. And, you know, wish that you stub your toe that day. I'm going to be upset. Upset. It's nonsense. It, again, if you moved here and you miss pumping your gas, move somewhere else. No, don't. It's, you don't even have to do that. It, we, we don't need to tell people to leave. You have a state right next to you. Where? Washington. Washington that yeah. gives you 
the opportunity to get out of your car when it's raining, when it's cold. Oh, yeah. Whip out that pump, that that nozzle. The opportunities are around you. Mm. Take a road trip. But don't. We, we, don't worry this for the rest of us. We need this. Yeah, don't worry this for the rest of us. I'm because okay. I'm tired. Yeah. Well, and the it. last thing I need is for more work. Right. Why are you taking away someone else's work? I don't want that. We did get a text earlier, right before we oh. switched uh, little opening topics here. The orcas are reminding us of an inviolable law. Nature bats last. Mm. It's non-negotiable. And there are no appeals. Oh, yeah, you're there's non-negotiable is really what people need to remember here. There's no one to talk to about this. There's no let's come together at the table and find something Wait, that works. There's for no the both Orca of us. King negotiator. Not oh happening. no, Aquaman ain't real. Wow. Well. And the reviews on the second movie are Ooh. early reviews. Well. I don't know what that was supposed to mean. Mm. I don't. I'm unsure. Oh, it's 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 not good. So, like the Flash. Yeah. Mm. Underwhelmed at the box office. What it sounds like to me is DC is doing great. You know how great they're doing. Warner Brothers was like, "Let me show you what we can do." That old Jimmy Gunn mm-hmm. before Flash is open the weekend announced that uh, yeah, the, three, the 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 one of the best movies that I've ever seen. The Flash. Guess who the director is of that, of that? Guess what else he's directing? Batman: Brave and the Bold. Huh? How you like that? Yeah, we're we're gonna be killing it over here. And then the movie flops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, keep it down. <laughs> Jimmy, keep it down, bro. Fiances, I know that this is something that's probably very easily Googleable, but how did? Jimmy become a name, a, a nickname oh, for James. James. I don't know. Does anybody? Yeah. Can y'all help me out? Yeah. Steven, Steven, Steven. That makes sense. Uh, Bob and Robert. I don't sense? understand. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one either. Speaking of Bobbert. Mm. Is that not, that's not what that's you said. That's a good one. That's a good one. We are going to talk about a few things. Mm-hmm. We're, we will have real stories. It won't just be me. Br- he, wow. Okay. Breathing heavy into the mic saying how tired I am and that I stand with the orcas. But I do. It's true. Got a few. Uh, in local news, mm-hmm. the Portland police are still covering their hoods with whoopsie daisies. <laughs> Uh, in uh, national news, Sarah Palin walked so Messy Bobert could force an impeachment vote, <laughs> but not not so fast. Uh, Father Patriarchy McCarthy would like to have a word oh, with the little miss. Oh man! Hopefully, we're able to get to uh, the other stories. The Greece officials mm. failed to help the sinking sinking boat. That happened to be co- uh, smuggling. Now we're up to 800 people on that boat. Yeah. And time and oxygen is running out for the five gawkers on the missing Titanic tour. Bruh. That is, in fact, taking place somewhere in the ocean. But we wouldn't know because that vessel has absolutely zero ability to communicate at this point. Let me tell you right now, there are tons of exclusive tours <laughs> out there. One of which, Renaissance. I would no. love. <laughs> Give me action at Renaissance, not at seeing the Titanic. Real quick, did you happen to see the video clip of uh, at the end of the night on one of these tours? Or, 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 one uh, of not shows. one of them, one of the shows uh, in Amsterdam. Second night in. Amsterdam, I okay. think. Mm. That's questionable. I'm not trying to... Uh, On the European leg. Yeah, not trying to do any false fa- false information. Wait, mm-hmm. fake news is what mm. they call it. Yes. Ooh, this brain is going to work. Mm. Uh, something happened, and she could not get off the horse. 
the oh it's no not a real horse friends right and had to con- just you know Beyonce just continues performing, but there is a look that she gives the stage crew when like one of them comes up and does the wrong thing and is just like you know I know they had I just know they had they had a meeting that evening you know everybody had to have a talk everyone had to have a talk. I'm gonna tell you right now what I don't want. You left Mava sitting on nope. a horse out there nope. during the finale of her nope. show. No, nope. man's put me in trouble just now. <laughs> I don't even. Wa- what do you mean? Get her and do it in the most discreet way. No, everything back to part one. How do we do this? Phase one. Start there. What did we? What, what's happening wrong? Because you're wilding. We got a text. Uh oh. You started laughing. Who is this? Well, I'm not going to say who I think it is because okay. I I don't like when I get it wrong. And, sure. And trying to figure people out from phone numbers that I they are numbers. I have memorized. Yeah. I am dyslexic. They are a mess. Mm. Uh, it says it won't just be me breathing into the heavy breathing into the mic and saying I stand with the orcas. Good morning and thank you for the disclaimer I will use on every Zoom call today. <laughs> It was all worth it. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't even care what it is. We have some great But I think listeners. it's Michelle. Good morning, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> we have some great, great listeners, bro. We did receive a text. <laughs> Happy Rude Teenth. It's happening, my X-Ray fam. Rudo! Rude. Good morning. So I have up to uh, issue 20 in Stable Spine. Am I missing one? Did 21 drop? Let me know. 21. He did actually like yell this out the other day. Did 21 drop? No, you were like, do I have the latest? <laughs> and I was like, where did that even come from? <laughs> I yeah. yeah, you be needing to know. I be needing to know. I forgot to, at the top of this uh, show, mm-hmm. I forgot to, you know, update what had happened. So this was a jam-packed weekend. Important things. Are you ready? There was a Father's Day. There was. There was Juneteenth. There was. And there was my birthday. Bruh, bruh. It was a lot. There was a lot going on this weekend. (laughs) I know that you guys did a lot of things for other stuff, you know. What did you do to celebrate my birthday? Yeah. What'd you guys do? We went to go see Spider Verse. That is not what we did for my birthday. We did that for Father's Day, babe. They just happened to share the day, but that was yeah. not. It was a gift to me. Well, well, it certainly was, but it was not a gift for me. Nice, nice. Okay, bars, wordplay. Okay, Don Demarco. Yes, metaphors, metaphors. No, metaphors. okay, slow down. What? No. Meta five. <laughs> Meta four is five to sixes, bro. You're killing it. <sighs> yeah, that was for you. Okay. You we guys, got benefit. What did you guys do with your Sunday? Yeah. Hey, let, us, let us know. You tell us. Yeah. While you're gathering all of your intel <laughs> <laughs> and your information, right. Ambush, I want to know. What is happening in this here little uh, sleepy city that we call Portlandia? You talking about training? <laughs> training. <laughs> not the streets. Mm. Not the patrols. Mm. Training? Mm. Mm. Shout out to uh, Alex Zelensky with the amazing reporting over at OPB. Alex! We miss you! It's so, so great. A new report found that the Portland Police Bureau has been rejecting visas, U visas, -visas, at an alarming rate. U visas are special visas that protect undocumented people who have been victims of violent crimes from deportation for up to four years. The fall report found that the Police Bureau rejected more than half of the U half of all U visas requested in 2021 and the first half of 2022. The average rejection rate for U visas among all Oregon police departments is just 20%. The investigation found that the police bureau 
rejections were often based on misunderstandings of the law or misstatements of facts from police reports. In some cases, victims were even rejected because they were not the intended target of the crime. I can't. This is a serious problem that is having a real impact on immigrant communities in Portland. After reviewing 200 U visas applications, 53 appeared to meet the federal program's qualifications. Mm. That's more than four dozen victims of violent crimes who were denied the opportunity to apply for visas they may have been eligible for. The report made a number of recommendations to address this problem, including providing more training to police officers on U visa requirements using proficient interpreters when communicating with crime victims and considering applications that were wrongly rejected mm. and reconsidering applications that were wrongly rejected. Um, the police bureau rejects <laughs> some of the findings, <laughs> but has said that it will consider the 46 rejected applications if applicants have new information to add to their case. A spokesperson... Say that again. Okay. Stop. I'm, no. I'm running it back. <clears throat> the police bureau, bureau rejects some of the findings, but it said that it will reconsider the 46 rejected applications if applicants have new information to add to their case. Mm -hmm. The spokesperson for the Latino Network that it, that is a that <clears throat> excuse me Latino Network that is unacceptable that the police bureau is putting the onus on the applicants to provide more information before their application is re-reviewed. Mm. Quote, these applications were identified because on their face, a denial was questionable. Hello. The Portland Police Bureau's actions, quote, threatened to undermine its mission to solve crime and protect the community. And, quote, conflicted with the city's policy of making Portland a welcoming and safe place for immigrants, and more broadly, with the city's equitable goals, the report said. Mayor Ted Wheeler, who oversees the police bureau, applauded the bureau for agreeing to reconsider applicants if alleged victims offer new information. Ambush, let me tell you why I'm mad, son. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question before I asked it, because that is, was indeed what I want to know right now. Tell me why you mad, son. Yo, this is the kind of thing that... Number one, everybody should read uh, Alex's piece because there's, you know, plenty more detail and it's not like we can just uh, read an entire article on uh, the show. But there's so much more detail in in her piece explaining that of those, you know, 53 applications that appeared to actually be bad rejections, right? Right. They looked at three of them and they were like, all right, you're right. And, you know, approve those. And then say, yeah, you know, for the rest of these, if you guys have new information, we can maybe talk about it. New information from a victim standpoint. It's new information from, from a victim standpoint. But new information in what regard, sir? You, your agency, has already been found to not have done this comprehensively. So all this information is going to be new to you, sir. Y'all didn't read it right in the first place. So we're supposed to deal with that? Mm. we're supposed to bring you new evidence because now all of a sudden this is a court of law <laughs> and not the investigative stage <sighs> but meanwhile you will leave these people in peril I'm going to ask the ever important question that Morgan always asks <laughs> who was this for? Bruh. because <clears throat> the feds are saying that these cases qualify here's the thing though before this report took place, um, there was a policy, there was a, a, a degree, there were several degrees of decisions that were made that said, hey, this is how we're going to handle immigrant cases. That discussion was had already within the confines of the PPB 
or whoever handed down this idea to the PPP saying, hey, this is how we want you to handle migrant crime. Crimes committed against immigrants. This is how we want you to handle that. We understand that there's this U visa thing happening that will give them the opportunity to, you know, stick around maybe longer than we want. So this is how we want you to handle it. <clears throat> then there's the report. PPB gets caught with their hands in the cookie jar. And it's like, uh, well, now what we're going to do is re-review. Like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't like we're watching, we're watching an organization do the ridiculous thing. But we're never confused that they're doing someone else's bidding. So, and we constantly communicate that. This is an arm of other entities. Mm -hmm. Meant to protect property, you know, oppress, so many different systems that it serves. So it's like, Chuck Lavelle, who are you carrying water for right now? Because this is a really silly thing. Ted Wheeler, this is a really silly thing to say. I applaud them for their re-review, <laughs> for having a meeting about a meeting. I applaud them. Do you? Well, if your job is to uphold white supremacy, then yeah. Yeah. And if you are still confused on how, you know, non non white people can uphold white supremacy again i'm going to um point you right in the direction of any single person non white person in the field of policing in law enforcement is in fact upholding white supremacy i know it's hard to hear even your dad is doing it right if your dad is law enforcement that may not be their point that may not be right. what they got into the field for right. that may not be what they want to believe but it is all at the end where the rubber meets the road there we go that's a new one that job is to do that <laughs> it's a mechanism and to pretend as if it isn't just because you want uh, you, it not to be, or you want to not be associated with that, or you don't want to be adjacent. You either have to get out of that field, or you have to talk to your family. You have to learn more. They have to learn more, you know. But the entire point of... Um, Am I not too long? No, not at all. The entire point of this um, this visa, this specialty visa, is to be able to, one, keep people safe, whether they are documented or not. Right. And we know that when people uh, are victims of violent crimes, often they do not report because they are too scared. Right. And if you have the added layer of potential deportation... Yeah, you might not ever say anything. Right. And you may continue to get to be terrorized <laughs> by certain folks because you don't have the idea that you can uh, find relief or support protection, and yeah. protection elsewhere. Also, the police are supposed to want to solve crimes. And this is supposed to help them solve crimes because now you have made it safe for someone to come forward. You have made it safe for someone to help in the investigation because you want to close that case. Close that case. Mm. So in 2020, uh, you know, we are all hopefully old enough to remember when the police pretended to be defunded. This is when those numbers started uh, dropping. Yeah. And the more that we get reporting about what has been happening since 2020, I want you with the police, with certain government agencies, I really want you to pay attention to where those lines intersect and connect. Because we said it then, we will say it now, 
the police quit working, lied to everybody, said, oh, they, don't, they don't want us here. <laughs> yep. Those That group of people downtown in that three block radius, they hate us. They make it so hard. Think about any other job that you could be on where you can say, hey, they don't like me, so I'm going to stop doing work. I'm going to show up every day, and I'm definitely going to continue to get paid, but I'm not going to do my job. Because they don't like me. The guys in the mail room. They're actually just, like, not smiling at me and thanking me every time I walk outside. Bruh. No one's happy to see me. Yeah. They say they don't want us here. We got a text. Any other industry will be canceled for this level of competency. Incompetency. And harm as the police. They They need to go. go. (laughs) Uh, No question. Fully agree. And also don't, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have it in me anymore to be like, I wonder why this is happening. It's on purpose. (laughs) The police made a decision. Then the, uh, I get that. It is so hard for me to say this word. Abba. Ombudsman? Um, yes. Ombudsman. The report <coughs> is basically explaining, you know, hey, this thing worked. We were doing, it looked like you were doing well, and then you decided you're not going to do well anymore. Mm. And how do I say this? Um, there's, there's not a good reason that a law a serious law enforcement officer and when i say serious i mean who takes seriously the things they say they do right to know that there are people that are being uh that are victims of crime violent crimes i mean and the the that's the other thing sorry i'm all over the place but yeah but the u visa has 28 qualifying crimes it's not like I got a paper cut, or this guy pushed me over. Or you stole my parking space and or got into a fight. you stole my parking space and... We're arguing. No. We're talking violent crimes. For there to be a moment where you're like, we don't need to approve more of these. Right. Like, so but basically what the what the report is saying is that it gave them, sh- shot them some bail, gave them some grace, said, this looks like there's a opportunity uh in training here it looks like you guys you know you don't have all the update up-to-date information you don't have uh that's what they call it. a training this is a teachable moment it's a teachable moment <laughs> and chuck was like hey man we've been trained on this in 2018 bruh Bruh. and uh also we've been searching for updated training But didn't find any until recently. So now we will, in fact, be having a training this year. So, hmm, thought you thought. And it's like, again, you want victims of crimes to come forward. You would love for victims of violent crimes to come forward. Except you don't. Right. And here they are coming forward and you're like, not you, not your crime. Literally. I'm cool on that. And have fun getting deported. (laughs) Right. The other thing to point out is that this is not the police granting this visa. This All the police have to do is sign off saying, yes, this person was a victim of a violent crime. That's That's it. So imagine being that person, being a gatekeeper at that spot. There isn't a guarantee that they are going to get that visa. Right. But they're certainly guaranteed not to get it if you won't say that they were a victim of a, of a crime, of a violent crime. And who does that serve? Right. That's it. That's right. it. Like, sit with, sit with who does that serve? High turnover, no training, all these things, like, 
What the police continue to show us is that they are not equipped to handle any of the things they're in charge of. They want to handle so much, too. They will tell us in this. This is them telling us we can't handle this portion. This is a thing that we can't do. We can't keep up with the law that hasn't changed. Like nothing changed since 2018, but we can't keep up. Okay. And then when somebody comes along and says, we have a solution, you can't keep up. What I have noticed here is you can't keep up with this thing. Yes, I can. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Didn't you just say that you can't keep up? Yeah, did you guys get defunded? So now I'm here saying I realize you can't keep up and I've got a solution for you and you're no longer going to have to be the ones that grant that. And now you are screaming about being defunded. I can't. I can't. I cannot. So will you do it correctly or not? What more money do you need to be able to read the thing that tells you what the rules are? It just, this does not fly. No. (laughs) In any other circumstance. No. The re-reviewing is the clear communicator um, of how they want to handle this. The the fact that they created another level of bureaucracy in in the pursuit of these victims gaining justice, there's nowhere else for this particular part of the issue. There literally is nowhere else to place like this is squarely on your shoulders, squarely to say, cool, or as you so eloquently put it, it was hilarious. The police said, we'll double check. We double checked our work. We found three mistakes. If you think you know so much, (laughs) bring new evidence and we'll recheck our work. I thought you guys hated bureaucracy. I thought you guys just yeah. wanted to do the thing. You just want to You just want the bosses to the get street. rid of yeah. the red tape. So you Let can me get just your job get done. in there and get dirty. But you create an additional layer of crap for you to wade through. Because they're not going to, and that's the entire yep. point. Zero intention. So uh, we, I know we got to move on, but I have to absolutely say you cannot reform this. This is what reform looks like. Chuck Lavelle's leadership is reform. Right. Sit with it. Right. Like for real. This right. is this is that's a choice. You have so many different choices. One of which is saying, "Wow, we really messed up. Lots of high turnover. Remember when you guys defunded us?" <laughs> right. We couldn't keep people. That one's on you. Give us that. Instead, this dude is just like, nah, what that report says really isn't it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, we be, we be knowing what we're doing, but we all know what we're doing. Right. But yeah, but since you know so much. Bring us more evidence. Bring us more evidence and we'll take another peek at it. So, I mean, again, you're right. We have to get ready to change, to switch lanes. But the story, you, the, the case you told, yeah, the case you presented to me last night was about a woman that was sexually assaulted, right? Yes. And there's, like, think about that. I need you to bring me additional evidence so we can revisit this case. What additional evidence do you think a victim who's already given testimony uh, to you and, and you've taken down all the notes in the in the case file, what additional evidence of someone who was a victim of a sexual crime? Mm-hmm. Like, there isn't any, right? Like, because you're scraping your heads like, what? Could, I don't know. I don't know. It was, what is, there isn't any. So just say no. Well, and in that particular case, they did. They They did. She was rejected twice. And that is part of the reason there's an investigation, because she was like, hey, man, (laughs) this is a domestic violence issue. And that is listed right here (laughs) as something that is qualifying. There were witnesses. The the cop that took the statement in the first place was like, there's no corroborating evidence for it. But there's witness statements. Like, who's that guy? You know? So rejected twice. And then 
oh shoot they're investigating us i guess we should probably give that lady a um visa we'll probably say yes to that one the, there were multiple um th that's why i'm saying read read alex's story there yeah, are guys. multiple examples of people and their situations in which they are left out to dry by the yeah. people that are sworn to protect and serve and there should never be a distinction. There should never be a those people are undocumented. Those people don't have, they're not citizens. Like, if, if you say that, to seriously sit and think about how that sounds. Those people aren't what? People? Right. Those people aren't people? Those people aren't victims of violent crimes? You say the land of the free home of the brave? I mean, I mean, just the just the pro law and order crowd that's like lock them up if there was a violent crime. Now all of a sudden you don't want to get to the bottom of it. We gotta go. Yeah, we're gonna take a. <laughs> we're not go going, guys. Take a quick music break. That was that was pretty heavy. I rang off. And and what did you say we were doing with that? Heading to the bottom of the ocean? Yeah. Yeah. Looking for cuckoo con. Hello. Huh? Y'all not fooling me, billionaires. We know what you were down there looking for. Trying to get your hands on some vibranium. Titanic. <laughs> Find the opening to Wakanda. Yeah, that's what they were trying to do. That's what they are trying to do. Morgan. Because they just can't catch a break, Ambush. Let me ask you something. Oh, yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. The multiverse is out there. Uh -oh. The billionaire version of you, who the you version of you would not like because you are a billionaire there. Mm -hmm. Step into their shoes, huh? Step into their Air Forces. No, no, no. Ooh. Air Maxes. Step into their Air Maxes, uh, Dior ones, and say to yourself, mm -hmm. Billionaire Morgan, do I want to get in a submarine the size of a minivan <laughs> <laughs> whose controls are a knockoff PlayStation controller and go see a old shipwreck that mm. is the most famous shipwreck in the history of shipwrecks. <laughs> and there are oodles of documentaries and AR I'm stopping here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let you know that I barely made it through the James Cameron or whoever. I think is it, it James Cameron? Cameron? Yeah. Whoever did the Titanic, I barely made it through that 18 hour movie that they put out with what's his face dang why can't Leonardo. i remember anything? thank you lord young the cat i barely made it through that i don't care i don't billionaire version of morgan doesn't care billionaire version of morgan is like um does the titanic pose a problem to any of the orcas <laughs> down there because maybe we should pull that out then right because this is stupid what is the obsession with the Titanic anyways? I, I would love to know. I would absolutely love to know. It is a, a vessel of class warfare. Why do we want to talk about it? <laughs> That's what the, the That's... SS w class warfare is what it should be called. It is literally a microcosm <laughs> of classism. And people are like, oh, give me the third version. <laughs> Not the SS class war. I don't understand why anybody wants to watch anything about that. <laughs> like the the next version is that that boat that just went down yeah. in Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Another warfare a class warfare boat. Like, yeah. nah, I don't know why people want to see the Titanic. Y'all have all the information. There is a traveling exhibit right now. I don't you know what I mean? No. I don't understand. Like on the real? There is zero left to discover about the Titanic. You, zero. You can't have a three-hour James Cameron movie if there's more to talk about. Can you? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's a lot. Also, I'm I'm going to be honest. I don't know if he did that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even Googled it because I don't care. That's exactly correct. Right. I don't feel like it's slander either way. Right. Let me tell you this story real fast. Yeah. We can do all of the rest Tell of to me. Because the billionaires just absolutely cannot catch a break. First, you got orcas coming after some of them, and then the other ones are like, I want to go on a Titanic tour. Right. On a thing with no windows. Uh, a tourist submersible, which is different than a submarine, if anybody was wondering. 
a tourist submersible that was on a dive to the Titanic wreck site in the North Atlantic Ocean has gone missing. The Titan, a 24, I'm sorry, 22 foot submersible was carrying five people, including a British billionaire and a French deep sea search expert. Mm -hmm. They lost contact with its support ship on Sunday about an hour and 45 minutes into its dive. And I want you guys to know what that that means on the same day that it left right. is the same day that it went missing. Right. Experts are now revealing the safety concerns about the vessel that had been raised as far back as 2018. That's pre-Panini. That's way pre-Panini. <laughs> mm. The Coast Guard is currently conducting a search and rescue operation for the sub using a variety of assets, including helicopters, ships, and underwater drones. Bringing out the rovers to yeah. get down to the bottom of it. Yeah, man. Multiple aircrafts detected underwater noise in the area. And although they don't know what the noises are, they say it's a good thing that they're searching in the area that they were detected. So far, there have been no sign, has been no sign of the submersive or its passengers. Will Conan, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, the chair of the Marine Technology Society Submarine Committee said, quote, We've been aware of this project for some time and have had some concerns. Mm. Give it to me, Will. He further explained that the main concern was a lack of oversight and adherence to industry-accepted safety guidelines. Most companies in the industry follow a well-established framework of certification and verification, but Ocean Gate's project aimed to operate without, <laughs> I'm sorry, without the ty that type of official oversight. Additionally, a former director of marine operations at Ocean Gate, David Lockridge, raised safety concerns around the same time and alleged that he was fired for doing so. Lockridge claimed that the company wasn't properly testing the vessel's carbon fiber hull and had pushed for a classification agency to inspect and certify it. David said he was then fired in retaliation for being a whistleblower. As Ocean Gate says, he was fired for breaching his contract by discussing the company's confidential information with OSHA. <laughs> wow. OSHA, bro. They settled with David Lockridge in 2018. They did not take his advice. 2018. That is five years ago. That's five years ago, guys. The amount of reports coming out from people that have been on the, the so Titan. Much. Yeah, that people that uh, are in the industry. Not one. Not one of these missions to get to the Titanic has gone the way they planned for it to go. Not one. $250,000 per person. $250,000 per person to get into something that is 22 feet long with four other people with a remote controller with no tether with no technology to protect it it doesn't even have the right material around it and the idea was did i say windows no windows no windows like what were y'all gonna do get I, down there and watch the movie i don't know <laughs> that's funny a fan you're down to watch pre-existing footage if there's just a tiny little slit of a window that you get to see so i went to the bottom of the ocean to do a drive-by and see it out like y'all don't even get to go and grab nothing you literally get to tell people i went down to the titanic like that this is that's all this is you went down for bragging i rights. really want someone to say that to me and i want them to mean it and my honest only response is cool story bro could not possibly care less no could not possibly don't want to hear the story no no this is a, a hubris sandwich <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. uh, <laughs> rudo says as your friendly neighborhood submariner oh god them's, <laughs> them, them's dumb dumbs is done i mean so oh wait but is that breaking news because it was like they were, this I, morning when air. i woke up i was mm. looking and there was no but by the time that I think it was like seven this morning, yeah, they, said they were supposed to be, be out uh, out of oxygen, and that's the other thing. I gotta believe. No, I'm. What do you have to pretend believe? that I didn't say that part? Okay, strike it. 
hit Jerk the damn button. <laughs> <laughs> it was a curse. No, I, I, I want to believe that people ask more questions, but I know that they don't, right? So I don't know what level of uh, dangers everybody on the vessel knew, were, you know, were aware of. But I got to believe that they they were aware of some, you know, mm -hmm. and even if that some is you are being bolted in. <laughs> you will not be able to get out without the help of all of these other things. Like it's a it's a lot of things. It's not right. just like, you know, the homie comes out and pushes right. a button on the thing like y'all need help. Help. You're not supposed to be down that far <laughs> in the vessel you're in. Right. Like if I'm if I'm going to make this decision to get into this thing and you tell me that there's 96 hours of oxygen uh, worth of oxygen for five people, I have questions immediately. What does that mean if somebody has a panic attack? Right. What does it mean if somebody like really is not doing OK? What does it mean if someone dies? Right. Because that speeds it all up. Yeah. What are the changes that can happen for that oxygen to go from 96 hours to 72 you know what they respond with what are you with osha <laughs> all these questions you got maybe this we got a whistleblower over yeah. here yeah maybe you know what maybe this trip just isn't for you maybe you don't have what it takes uh we're reviewing so many applicants right now mm. people don't want to go down and see the titanic how about you sit it out and then I just want to go back to that. You mean to tell me there is there is demand enough <laughs> for there to be a a company in Everett, Washington that is just going down to see the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, like that's just there's enough demand. What what just happened? This text. The sub does have one window, but it's rated to 1,400 meters. And they wanted to take it to 4,000 meters. Yeah. And the company said. Heck no. But they did it anyway. Well, Sketchy but which company AF. said heck no? Because the CEO of the company is on the vessel. People from the company, that was one of the things that uh, David, I believe, Lockridge, was was fired for saying. Right. Hey, man, you can't put this material. <laughs> that window is not rated. And yes, the one window. But honestly, again, I say. What we're we supposed to line up in the, the five of us right. taking turns uh, peeking out of one window? Well, you're bolting in. To see... What do you mean? Into, into your... I don't yeah. think into your seat. You're oh, just okay. bolted in, meaning they can't... Oh, okay. They have no control of getting out of the vessel. Um, What do you think is going to happen to... What's this? Ocean Gate? What are they called? Yeah. Yeah, which Ocean is, Gate, which is a... Which is a strange one, guys. I'm just going to... Listen. Whenever I hear... Heaven's Gate comes to my mind immediately. We do love a good cult. We do. Michelle, huh? Do we not? Shoot. We love a good cult. Oh, this one is something else. But more than anything, there's no gates. Not Zed. There's no gates in the ocean. And guess who doesn't get to operate them if there were? Humans. Oh, oh thank you for the, it says the, <laughs> the company that made the window offered to design a window that could go the depth and the, oh, wait, go that depth and Ocean Gate guy refused. I oh my gosh! Ay ay ay! Huber soup with a side of Huber salad, and that's on top of yeah. the sandwich. Yeah, the sandwich goes in the soup, man. It's a dipper. Yeah, yeah. Holy moly! Breaking news donut. Oh my goodness! That's right. The company that made the window was like, "Hey guys, you've got the one that doesn't go that deep." <laughs> You need this one over here. Happy to give it to you. We'll provide. And dude was like, hard pass. Don't want. Ready to go. <laughs> like, we take off tomorrow, bro. Yeah. You're not going to mess up our launch. Yeah. Hey, man, we got a tight budget. Slim budget we're working with over here. Stop trying to upsell me. Oh, 
Oh, oh. It's he magic. wasn't falling for the upsell. Mm -hmm. And that's how billionaires keep their dollars right yeah. there. Stop buying Jordans. Okay. okay. You know what? <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> Stop buying Jordans. Stop buying Jordans. I want it's, it's a weird thing, Ambush. I don't feel bad for the people that are down there. Um I I I, I don't I I not. And I care about human life. Yeah. And I want everyone to prosper. And I also want us to leave things alone. I am not going to be fooled, much like you said. Yeah. You're down there looking for Wakanda. You I got a different Wakanda. idea. Yeah. yeah. I think the migrant boat going down and the billionaire boat going down mm -hmm. or sub going down does in fact lead lend itself to the idea of trying to find a second uh, yeah dwelling yeah this is a self-inflicted with a guys. slave labor on board already board. no yeah, this is a, no i agree with you they just don't allow that in wakanda so these two things don't go together no but we're going to figure out how that all works because what are you doing at the bottom of the ocean Weren't y'all just mad that Ariel's black? Like, come on. <laughs> There's so many different things. Y'all just mad that Ariel's black. <clears throat> what you doing down there? Who you looking for? Tell to me. Also, have you not seen the Meg? I'm not trying to pick up what you I just haven't watched. Down. I definitely have not watched the full Meg. But what I have seen is uh what looks like a pill type of submersed yeah. vessel just getting chomped. <laughs> but Jason Statham is inside. And so obviously yeah, Jason Statham is inside. He's going to be fine. You, guys, you, know. you can crack that thing open and somehow he's going to go from 4,000 meters can, down yeah. to the top. He of can swim at any depth. Pressure bro. doesn't matter. You know, he's a all this stuff. He can swim at any depth, bro. This is absolutely, I think, a winning uh, response. Okay. They want. Namor's vibranium. <laughs> Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Huh? <laughs> this story has it all. Hyperfixation <laughs> on <laughs> and resources allocated for danger to only an elite few, blatant corporate refusal to prioritize basic safety, and I guess man's hubris in the face of the sea and its creatures. Hey, would you please just come write the news for us? No, yeah, that's like that sounds like a literary masterpiece there. <sighs> Dang, dang. Yeah. I'm going to hit this Bobert one. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about... I, for, I forgot. It's I'm done. Sorry. It's quite all right. Let's 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 get to her. Bobert out here embarrassing herself again. All the time. <laughs> yeah, it's her favorite. Won't she do it? <sighs> a surprise effort by hard right House Republicans to impeach... To impeach... Mm, put that R in there. Right? <laughs> President Joe Biden has been sidelined for now. The impeachment resolution, which charges Biden with high crimes and misdemeanors over his handling of the U.S. border with Mexico, was filed by Representative Lauren Bobert. The resolution angered GOP colleagues who were caught off guard by the unscripted move. Even though it was not expected to pass Thursday, the vote would have been politically tough for GOP lawmakers and a potentially embarrassing spectacle for Speaker Kevin McCarthy splitting his party. Mm-hmm. Instead, McCarthy negotiated a deal with Boebert to send the Biden impeachment resolution for review to the Judiciary and Homeland Security Committees, fending off a vote for some time. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, we got processes. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this in order, girl. <laughs> but in the sign of the right flank's determination to push ahead, Boebert said that if that if the committee's slow roll action, she'll bring her resolution back to the floor every day for the rest of my time here in Congress, forcing <laughs> a House vote on Biden's impeachment. She's a big girl now. Yeah. The, the development underscores the whole the House conservative flanks, uh, flank exerts over McCarthy, forcing the Speaker to accommodate hard right priorities if he wants to stay in power. It also shows the power of a single lawmaker to use the rules of the House to force a snap vote on such weighty measures as a presidential impeachment. Can I just tell you? Mm. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say, uh, 
the fact that this is a how do you call it, a surprise to the um Republican establishment there. Yeah. You mean Bo Bear surprised you? Bo yeah. Bear did something that was surprising? Yeah. You mean Marjorie did something off the cuff? I mean, oh, Marjorie did. I know you just probably met Lauren, but oh, I met both of them because, oh. like, did you, you see Marjorie start some beef? Because no, Marjorie, not. Marjorie, do not mess with messy Bo Bear. She does not like her. Mm. Oh, she, you mean George Santos lie? I mean, you're letting these people mm-hmm. with very large, very l- widely understood negative characteristics represent your party loudly they say all the quiet parts out loud and then you're like what well, came out of nowhere <laughs> okay sure i mean i i hear you and also mm. i think this illuminates a certain thing and that that thing is you've got what people are calling reasonable republicans like mm. a kevin mccarthy again with that I say uh, I am a firm believer in there is no such thing. There is just, you know, different brand. And because Kevin McCarthy understands that there are certain things you do and you don't do. Right. And he adheres by some of it, not all of it, obviously, but he adheres by some of it. He knows this is a performance. Right. There is no question to Kevin McCarthy that they are that they are they there to do good work or not. No, there's no question for him. He's an actor. Right. And I don't mean, you know, uh, out here I'm not what's his face? Uh Alex Jones calling anyone a crisis actor. What I mean is he's performing and he knows he's performing. He knows that I'm not really here to uh make the state that my constituents live in better. I'm not here to make the federal government run smoother. Like none of those things are his thing. Disinterested. Disinterested. He knows that, but he also knows there's a whole big game that's been real fun for all these, you know, politicians that have kept everybody out of the institutions so that they can continue to play this performative game. They are absolutely shocked every single time somebody says your game is dumb we could do something oh whoa lauren bobert is not that brand where she she's not the brand of republican that is going to nicely do the things (laughs) and i want you to think about how many different strategies are being deployed by the same group of people, even in this moment where they look like they're infighting. They're just all doing what they're supposed to do from the director of what their little sect is. Right. But it is coordinated. It's a coordinated effort. It's just not always together. So yeah. uh, That sounds crazy. It's coordinated, but not always together. What I mean by that is, that doesn't mean that McCarthy knows for certain that Bo Bear is going to force a vote on a Tuesday when leadership has not been a part of this conversation at all. Right. And he is expecting still the same respect that a Speaker of the House is supposed to receive. He's not getting that. Right. Not at all. Not from those folks. And he's not going to. How many votes was it? There's, there's no vote because they... Oh, no, for McCarthy to uh, become speaker. How, how oh, many, how many times did it take for him it, to? Yeah. Uh, 7,000. I don't remember the number. <laughs> Eight days. 40 days. They 40 don't, nights. They don't respect you, sir. They never did, and they're not going to start. They don't respect themselves, but they certainly don't respect the jobs they have. Like, look, Jim Jordan out here at committees not even knowing what he's talking about, and he's the one. Who started the whole investigation on stuff? Like, right. we are having a, po- a political meltdown. <laughs> mm. Because it's just all coming, it's just all flowing. How ridiculous. How disconnected. On its face. On its face. How very purposeful, purposeful yeah. it is to not actually get a job done. Yep. 
the job is running. You know, the job is campaigning. The job is uh, being reelected. The job is not to help the constituents. We that should radicalize us. Yeah. That should not put us in a position to even uh, think about doing anything that is normal. But best believe this is serving someone's purpose. Big ones. Best believe it. Lauren Bur- <laughs> Bobert isn't cooking this stuff up on her own, guys. No. Thank you. This I I want I want us to uh, think about the people that are behind the people. Yeah. This this kind of stuff splitting the party, splitting the uh, factions of fascism. Mm-hmm. The end of the the goal is not Lauren Boebert's goal necessarily. Right. Right. But someone like a Roger Stone. Someone like a Steve Bannon, their goal is for uh, some supremacy to rise. <laughs> yep. For certain very particular subset of people to be the people in charge. And you, that does not mean you have to just be like a white man. You just have to uphold. Shout out to the Proud Boys. Man. You just have to be able to uphold all of the things that do, in fact, <laughs> center and favor white men. But if you're down with that because, you know, you feel like the uh, proximity to that power is worth it. We know that exists. Right. There's no question that exists. There's no question that that's happening right now in different areas right. or industry. It's really uh it 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 really is for me scary the tactics that um conservatives are willing to go to get people so scared that they vote just or act solely based on fear solely based on fear of things that aren't real there is no invasion at the border no nope Joe Byron is not does not have an open border policy. As much as I think, uh, you know, who in their right minds on their way over here. Mm. You I, I am a firm believer that a human cannot be illegal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. uh, it's just not something that you get to do. And the reason that we have been able to do it is, again, shout out to uh White supremacy and colonization. There's too much for us to unlearn for us to even be dealing with a Bo Bear right now. Because, yeah. listen, barbarian. Mm-hmm. She does not care what happens to anybody. Yes. She doesn't care. No. Nope. And she's a grandma now, so. Happy well, almost. Okay. Almost. Almost, Nana. Yeah. Um, Ooh, one, oh. Go ahead. Nana, I was, I was gonna just going to say, there's one more text that says... Uh, also, give me the director's cut where Kukul Khan and Wakanda unite against the Western imperial powers instead of wrecking each other. Please and thank you. Yes. That's supposed to be Black Panther 3, but you see what they don't want to talk about. Well, they Black don't Panther. want to talk about <laughs> Did you already read this one? The irony of hubris oh, killing no. people visiting the greatest monument to hubris that ever existed. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. Went right past it. Uh, that, yeah. This is, I mean, shout out to Twitter. Black Twitter has gone hamburger. Yeah. Not just with the orcas, but also with the missing billionaire vessel. If you want to laugh, because that is how you process information. Right. Don't wait until your break. Do it now. (laughs) Get right on there. The memes are out there. The memes are incredible. And really, these are the, you know, I've seen a lot of people be like, I can't believe that you'd be laughing at people that are. Yeah, man. uh, The news isn't even talking about a boat with nearly 800 people on it because they were fleeing countries. (laughs) Right. But that 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 whole situation sounds a lot like uh, there's going to be quite the quite the information coming out of that. Yeah, because Greece is out here lying. Mm-hmm. The officials are lying. They're like, it wasn't that many people on that boat. 
They're like, we didn't, we wasn't over there. We didn't know until after the fact. And what it sounds like is y'all was over there trying to tow it and mm. made it sink. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. So we could be talking about that. And instead, I don't feel bad that I am laughing at uh, people that decided that paid $250,000 per person to go to the bottom of the ocean in a thing that doesn't go to the bottom of the ocean. Right. With the CEO of the of the company that knows that thing don't go to the bottom of the ocean. But we got to go because it's Tom Hartman time. It's true. It's true. We love you, fiancés. I'm sorry I was so tired today. My brain is not firing the way that it normally should be. Uh, as always, a wonderful time. Yes, the show made possible thanks to Morgan Jones and DJ Ambush and Kyle G, our podcast editor. Thank you. Shout out to the Tech Squad, Tech Fam. Big hearts, Confidence big in hugs. The conversation. Um, and hey, man, you know how we do. Don't let the individual distract you from the system. Poverty is a policy choice. People over profits. Power to the people. None of us are free until we are all free. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.